don't get weary in the work because he said we've got to be faithful in the work until we die and so we began to tell you last week at the 11 o'clock service for those of you who were there and uh, for those of you who weren't it's just a refresher somebody say don't get weary in working for God uh, tell yourself I uh, say self I'm talking to you now don't get weary in the work of God the the problem becomes what I call compassion fatigue uh, the problem becomes uh, faith fatigue I've been serving God a long time and I can tell you from personal experience that when you work at anything and when you work for anybody after a while you can get tired of the work you can get tired of the work because of ungrateful people who benefit from your work and never say thank you you can get tired of the work come on here because you pour your energy and your prayers and your teaching and your sacrifice into your children into your 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 your, your mentees into uh, the people that 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 you work for you can pour it in and after a while you look up and wonder if your work has made any difference because it seems that you're pouring work into buckets with holes in it and you can end up one day with compassion fatigue. Uh, you can end up with love fatigue. I love you, I care about you, but after a while, I'm tired of you. Oh, I guess I'm in here by myself. I, 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 I just get compassion fatigue. I've been pouring myself into the marriage. I've been pouring myself into the children. I've been pouring myself into raggedy family relationships. And after a while, I get tired of working on it. But I came to tell you, you cannot get weary in this work because the reward only comes by being faithful. Somebody holler all the way. Uh, and so we must have people on our, uh, on our work team tell your friends, say, it's an individual calling, but you can't really do this for the long haul by yourself. You got to have a team. You got to have a, a, a connection so you can keep encouraged in the work. Now, you can tell my voice is struggling a little bit, so if you'll say amen, it'll accelerate the sermon and I'll be finished fast before my voice gives out. Amen? There must be people on the team. Now, Jesus passed by. He saw a blind man from birth and his disciples, somebody say his disciples, Everybody needs a team, and on Jesus' team, even so, he, he, his disciples ask him, uh, man of God, who sinned? Who sinned that this man or, or was born blind? The first thing you need to do when you're going to work for God uh, is, is to keep a team around you with the correct suppliers on your team. Uh, if you're going to work for Jesus for the long haul, first of all, you and I must have on our team what I call clarifiers. Would you say clarifiers? Jesus has on his team, and, and, and they want to know uh, who sinned. You see, when you work for God, you got to have people around you that help you think right. In this text, there are people who automatically want to blame the victim. They want to blame the, who sinned, whose fault was it. You cannot work for God long with an attitude of blame and judgment. You need some clarifiers to remind you that everybody that's in trouble is not in trouble uh, of their own doing. And you got to have people around you to remind you because when you get tired of people and tired of working for them, immediately your attitude can change and get real stinky. What's wrong with him? Why, how come he can't get better? Why don't he pull himself up by his own bootstraps? you got to have some clarifiers on your team so you don't start to blame the victim. Oh, come on here. When you get tired, your attitude gets stinky. When you get tired, come on here, your attitude gets uh, funny. Yeah, yeah. And you will begin to find blame uh, on the people that you were sent to help. You got to have clarifiers to remind you that sometimes people who are in trouble are not in trouble by any doing of their own. Yeah. Got to have clear. Somebody, sometime I need the saints to clarify me because sometimes I'm getting ready to say, uh, tell them all to go jump in the lake. No, 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 no. 
They're in trouble by no doing of their own, but that the works of God might be manifest. Sometimes people are just in trouble. Uh, the devil has hooked them. The devil has, has terrified them. The devil has put them in ditches. But it is that the work of God might be manifest. If you're going to keep on working for God, every now and then you need a clarifier uh, to tell you, get your head together, get your thoughts together. Am I in here? Uh, you, you, cannot, you cannot work for God with blame. Because blame always clouds love. You cannot work for God, I said, with blame. Because blame always clouds love. And when I'm going to work for God, I got to do it out of love or I will get tired of the work. I must have some clarifiers on my team. Secondly, if you're going to work for God and not get weary, you need to realize that on your team there will be, somebody said will be, somebody said there must be, some critics. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, because half of y'all turned in your resignation when you discovered that. But on your team, there must be, and it's not by accident, that there will be, there must be critics on your team. Uh, you quit the church. You, you left and went down the street to somebody else's church. You, you decided that there was no love at New Creation because you got criticized in the work you were doing. May I tell you, get a hold of yourself. Let me clarify something for you that there will always be critics when you try to do good. That's why he said don't get weary in well-doing. You're going to reap if you don't faint, but critics come to make you lose heart. Uh, you're going to have to have some critics on your team to help you, uh, to help you uh, be clear about your resolve to keep serving God. Uh, you need some critics because a, a, a critic will always tell you what your friends won't. Uh, a, a, a critic ha has a way of always having a rebuttal, always having a better way. I was trying to help somebody one, one, one season uh, in their spiritual growth and everything I said to him, it was a yes but. Yes, but. Yes, but. And after a while I said, yes, but get your butt on out of here because I can't talk to you. You got a critical attitude. You got a spirit of criticism. I can't help you. Eh, but the Lord had to correct me because I need some people around me because your critics keep you sharp. Your critics, I said, your critics will keep you sharp. Your critics will, have to, will, will make you examine the truth of, uh, and the veracity of your own work. You're going to need some critics in your life as you work for God. Touch your friend say, don't quit because you're criticized. Y'all couldn't even repeat that. I said, don't quit because you are criticized. You need some critics on your team. You need some critics because they will always tell you what your friends want. Thirdly, if you're going to keep on working for... Uh, wait, wait, do I need to stop right there? Wait, y'all. I felt a cold spirit. <laughs> Critics will hurt your feelings. But if you work for God based on feelings, you ain't going to work long. I said, critics, I said, critics will always make you second guess what you're doing. Uh, uh, but if you have an individual imperative in God, after a while you just got to shake yourself, dry your tears, blow your nose, and get back up again. In spite of your critics, come on here, there's a call on your life. You must work with critics on your team. Second, thirdly, if you're going to continue to work for God, Always know that there will be confronters in your team. You need the difference between a critic and a confronter. I'm glad you asked. Because a critic is not for you. A critic is always trying to prove him or herself smarter, more intellectually astute. A critic needs to be right at the expense of you being made wrong. But a confronter, come on here, is for you even though it doesn't feel like it. A confronter, confront, 
to put one's forehead, one fron, fronds, the word forehead, it means to come forehead to forehead with you in order to help you stay straight in the work. If you are a thin-skinned Christian, you run from confrontation. If you are a thin-skinned individual, you can't take your wife telling you the truth. You can't take your husband telling you you're too fat, you need to go on a diet. You can't tell. But you got to know that a confronter is not against you. But a confronter is for you to help you be better in your work. Why is it so quiet in the house? Stop living in the realm of your feelings. If you're going to work for God, know that God has placed these people on your team to help you keep on in the work. Every now and then, I've had to have good friends to get in my grill, to get in my face, to tell me, stop crying, stop belly aching, shut up and get back to your work. What? what? Are you talking to me, the great woman of God, the great woman of faith and power? You need a confronter to tell you truth that will help you to see the things in your life that you can't see right now because of your weariness. It, it, it is the person who speaks the truth in love. Touch your friend and just tell, tell him, because I handed you a breath mint. I wasn't trying to hurt your feelings. I'm for you. Because I, I had to tell you that your attitude is a little stinky. I'm not trying to criticize you. I'm just confronting you in love so that somebody else won't have to really hurt your feelings. You need some confronters in your life because they speak the truth in love. Young people, your mama and daddy don't hate you because they confront you. They're trying to save you because those of us who love you confront you in order to benefit you, but the policeman don't love you. Uh -uh. The prosecutor don't love you. Uh, and they will confront you to punish you, not to help you. Uh, don't get mad at the preacher. Don't send me an email. Don't, 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 don't put me on Facebook saying that I'm being mean to you. You better hope that this word confronts you while you're in a place of safety. So you can grow up into God in all things. You need somebody to say, I need a clarifier. Help me think right. I said, say, I need somebody to help me think right. Uh -huh. Because you can get so quote unquote religious and so saved till you start blaming the people you sent to help. Uh, you start judging the people that God sent you to uphold. I know it's quiet in here, but I'm talking to you. Uh huh. Because when you don't have a clarifier, a clarifier helps you to say, how dare you judge the alcoholic and you just came out of drugs? How, how dare you judge the homosexual and you know you was a, a serial fornicator just last week? You need a clarifier to help you think right. Why did it get quiet in here? You will blame the very people that you are sent to help if you don't have a clarifier in your life to help you think right. And then you need a critic in your life because the critic will tell you, thank you for the offering, brother. Thank you. Flow. Uh, a, a critic will, will tell you what your friends will, even though they're not for you, you need to pay attention to what they say to you. And then you need to learn who to ignore after they get finished talking. You need a confronter to tell you the hard truth. And then fourthly, you need some comrades. You need some comrades in your life because comrades fight for you. You can get so weary in this work. Uh, and weariness will, as I said, will pervert your attitude. And it'll make you, instead of a loving Christian, it'll make you a fighting Christian. I, I have a, a pastor friend who said to me years ago, he said, Copeland, you need to always keep you a few half-saved deacons. <laughs> because in your position, you can't afford to be a fighting pastor. You, you can't afford to be a fighting woman. I, I, was, I, was, I was disturbed about some things lately. And touch your friend and say, stay off of Facebook. 
cowards get on Facebook to work their stuff out. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh, people without courage get on Facebook to blast uh, the general reality instead of having the courage to go to you and work it out personally. But I digress. I said you need some comrades because comrades will fight for you. Bishop Blake told me many years ago, he said, Copeland, an elephant cannot afford to argue and fight with a flea. When you are an elephant and you got fleas fighting against you, and you're an elephant, you go to cussing and fighting, can't nobody see the flea. But they see you. So I need some comrades. I need some half-saved deacons to go take care of some stuff for me. Come on, Key. I need some people to shut the mouth of the critic in the beauty shop. I need some people to fight for what's right. Come on here. When the preacher can't be there to defend oneself, every Christian needs some comrades. But Brother Zenon, you don't want to have to pull your gun out and go New Orleans on them. You don't want to have to do that. But you need somebody to have your back so you don't have to reduce yourself to being a fighting Christian. Everybody needs some comrades, somebody say, to fight for you. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Ah, oh, to fight the good fight. Because mm, an elephant can't afford to flight, fight with a flea. They'll be saying, that elephant done lost her mind. Look at, take her to the crazy house. Look at her, she done, give, give us a, uh, and all the while they don't know that it was a flea that got you distracted from the work. Don't be weary in well-doing. You need some comrades. And then number five, I think it's number five, you need some constituents. The, the, the comrades fight for you, but constituents fight with you for the issue. Constituents join their energy, their money, their conversation, their creative talent. Constituents fight with you. And, and, and it's important in this era, uh, as we talk about legacy in this church, uh, Bishop and I need some constituents because the church is not built on one man or one woman. The church must be built on a body of believers who fight for the same righteous cause. So that when I'm laying down in the grave, when I'm looking from the battlements of glory, I can see people who still saying holiness is right and let's uphold the bloodstained banner and let's love one another and let's support the vision. Constituents fight with you for the issues that you stand for. Uh, I don't know about you. I love everybody. I can go to lunch with anybody, but I, I want to be around people who walk the same walk I walk and who talk the same talk I talk. Come on here. I love anybody. I, 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 and, you know, I, I can make myself comfortable anywhere with anybody. I, I ain't scared to go in the crack house. I ain't scared up in, I ain't scared. I ain't scared. But when I'm talking about fellowship, the Bible says, have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. Uh, I want some people, some constituents who believe God like I believe God. Who, who believe that it's right to shut your mouth and not talk about people. Who believe that it's right uh, to, 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 to give good in the face of evil. You need some constituents with you in the work who believe and who fight for the righteous cause you fight for. You need some constituents. Come on here. How many of you, you prayer warriors, you know what it is to come to prayer and you in here and ain't but five people. You need some constituents because constituents keep you encouraged. Constituents let you know you ain't in the fight by yourself. 
You need some comrades to fight for you and then some constituents to fight with you. You're trying to, I, I, and I got to go, I'm looking to God to bring this women's wellness center uh, to pass. And I'm, I'm believing God to give me that property over there. I'm going to say it until something happens. I'm believing God till this money comes into my hand. I'm believing God till we can get uh, homeless women and not just give them a bath and a backpack, but to heal their brokenness. Women who've been raped and women whose hearts have been broken. Women who've had abortion after abortion after abortion abortion and never dealt with the guilt of their sin. Oh, I need a place to bring them, but, but I don't need people around me telling me, child, that building costs too much. You know, God ain't never gained nobody. That's a million dollars. Oh, Jesus. Now, get, get, talk to the hand. In this work, I need people who believe God with me. Who believe God for me? If you never saw it that way, uh, if, you, if you never saw it happen, that you can look to Him who is able, who understands if God didn't 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 have it, God would make it, so that we could do the work of righteousness for somebody else. Keep believing people around you as constituents, for they fight with you for the same cause. You know, somebody said, "Don't get weary in the work. Don't get weary in the work." Don't get weary in the work. Somebody that's sitting beside you and they already sleep, tell them, wake up. <laughs> Don't get weary in the work. The last three things, and then we're going on quick. Ooh, quickly, the sun is going. I got two minutes. Somebody say, you need some confidants. You need some confidants. You need some confidants. Every worker uh, uh, is, is in peril of your heart becoming contaminated. Everybody who works for God, if, if you work... If you work construction, if you work as a farmer, wherever you work, part of the contamination of your work gets on you. Ain't nobody here. If you're a surgeon, blood gets on your scrubs. Uh, if you're a nurse, sometimes vomit gets on your shoes. The contamination of the work gets on you. You need some confidants that are safe and mature safe and mature so you can empty your heart know that they will pray and never talk about it again you need confidants where you can open your heart and say look at here I'm I'm sad I'm broke I'm, I'm I'm sick of people and they can listen to you they can take it take it to the father and then they can still hear you sing and still hear you preach and not look at you any different Parents, your children are not to be your confidants. They don't have a grace. Come on here. Children are not grace to hear their parents' troubles. Parents, don't make your child your confidant talking about your baby's daddy. Don't, don't make your child your confidant saying what your mama don't do and what she should do. They don't have grace. Find you some peers with the same level of strength and maturity that can hear it, pray about it, and never bring it up again. You know, I can tell, I gotta hurry up. I can tell half of y'all ain't got no friends. You know how I can tell that? Cause you're on Facebook too much. You're on Instagram too much. I can tell you ain't got, because when you have friends, you don't have to dump your trash. You can put it in the trash can, the man can take it on the way it is, and there is no contamination on the yard. Somebody say, you need a confidant that can keep your secrets and pray for you and not mention it again. Ah, oh, yes, and then after you, you keep on working for God, make sure that on your team you not only have a confidant who can hear, but you need a comforter. You need, everybody's not grace to comfort. Everybody not, everybody not grace to comfort. They don't have, a, a comforter uh, is one who not only can hear you, but a comforter is graced to supply to you in the area of your grief and your brokenness. The people who work hardest often have no comfort. Because you know why? Y'all think that strong people don't need no help. Y'all think that, that people who are anointed can just lay hands on their own self and fall out under the power and get up and slay the devil and slay... No! 
The strongest people are the people who people siphon off of and, and, and steal our strength and, and, and siphon our gas. And so we need comforters if you are doing great work, whether it is in the judicial system, whether it's in the community as an organizer, whether it's in, in a political realm. Make sure you keep somebody around you, comforter, comfort, not just to make you feel better, comfort, but to fortify and bring strength to the area of your weakness. I need somebody sometime that can put their arm around me and comfort me and say it's going to be all right and I'm with you and, and, and you might be down but you're not out. Don't get weary in well-doing because in due season we shall reap if we faint. Not somebody say I need a team around my life. And then finally Jesus said this, I must work the work what of him who sent me. You need to do this work based on your covenant relationship with God of him who sent me. May I tell you, you will never stay in the work if you're working for Claudette Copeland. You will never stay in this work if you're working to please Elder Marvin Brown. You will never stay in the choir and come on here if you're in here to please or to show off in front of Paul and Robbie Cockfield. I'm talking good. You will never stay in a diaconate if your only reason for being there is your friendship with Deacon Bonner. Your covenant cannot be a flesh covenant because as soon as we disappoint you, you're going to quit working. As soon as we don't call your name, you're going to leave and go down the street and talk about us. You got to have a covenant to know that you work based on him who sent you to do the work. You got to have a covenant based on him who said, I don't care what Negroes do, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'll supply your every need. You got to work the work of him that sent you. And the Bible says this, work and be faithful unto death. If you're going to be a worker for Jesus, you can't work till you get tired. You can't work until you get your feelings hurt. But you got to decide, I'm going to work and be faithful, what? Unto death. Because it is only then that I get the crown of life. And this is what we're working to achieve. Get up on your feet this morning. Tell your neighbor, keep on working. Tell your neighbor, keep on working. Don't get weary.